judge or we are business people benefiting from hajj and the Prophet said to them, I don't know the answer. And the next day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses saying to them, acknowledging that they are subject and telling them that once you finish transporting the hajjis from Arafat, then join the hajjis and play hajj. And Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them that you have the edges of hajj. So by working, it does not mean that you have no edges. It, is not, it does not mean it, has, it is not a ibadah. Another example of this, a strong man with lot of energy came and to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Sahaba saw this man and how energetic he was, how strong he was. And they said, we wish this could be in Sabeelillah. That he, and they meant here that he would be a mujahid, that he would be conducting the head. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam corrected them. He said to them, if he has been working to look after two old parents, this is fi Sabeelillah. If he has been working with his energy and strength to look after his family, this is fi Sabeelillah. If he is even working for his own, so he would not need others, this is fi Sabeelillah. So the concept of ibadah is not restricted to the prayer or the fasting. Anything that you do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the proper niyyah, this is a ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. Seeking knowledge and learning, reading and researching, this is all a ibadah. And the example of this is what the Prophet again sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. At one time, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to the mosque and there were two churches, two halakhas. One of them were doing this. <coughs> and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other circle was a circle of learning and teaching each other. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commented on this. He said, this circle, they are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing this. And Allah may answer them or may not answer them. And the other circle are learning and teaching. And I have been sent as a teacher. And he said with the other group. So this is seeking knowledge is not something to be illiterate. This is something that we should be doing and seeking the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and consider it part of the ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a long hadith said that those who seek knowledge those who are knowledgeable, they are like the moon in the, star, uh, in, the, in the sky. They shine much better than other stars. So this is something to keep in mind. When we are doing our work, when we are studying, when we are looking after our children, this is all part of the concept of ibadah. And this is when we all, all will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stressed this on many occasions. At one time, he said that even if you have a sexual relationship with your wife, this is you will be rewarded. And the Sahaba were surprised. How come? And he said to them, if you do this in haram, you will be punished or not? And they said, yes. He said, if you do it in halal, you will be rewarded. On another occasion, he said, even a morsel, you put it in the mouth of your spouse, will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the concept of ibadah is not restricted to one aspect. It covers, covers the all phases of our life, the all aspects of our life, provided we do it with the proper intention, provided we do it seeking, seeking the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, reflection itself is something that is considered a ibadah. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب. Those who reflect will look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heavens, the earth, the rotation of the sun and the moon, the day and the night, things that we take for granted. But if you reflect about it, then the rivers, ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا. The result is that you connect with whatever you see around you and you acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many of us unfortunately miss this, not only among the Muslims, but even more so among the non-Muslims. There is a huge divide between scientific knowledge and acknowledging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And without it, without acknowledging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humanity would remain at loss. Humanity would always be missing the spiritual nourishment that believers enjoy. So this is something that the Sahaba were very keen about. Umm al-Zabba radiallahu anha, the wife of Abu al-Zabba, one of the great Sahabi, she was asked, what was the most enjoyable thing that Abu Dhabi used to do, the enjoyable ibadah. And she said, tafakkur, reflection. And again, we live in a society where there is a lot of pressure to do this, to do that. It leaves us with very little time for reflection. And we should allocate some time in our day, preferably at the end of the day. Before we sleep, give ourselves few minutes, 15 minutes, to reflect about the day, to reflect about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to reflect about what we have done right, what we have done wrong, and what we can do for tomorrow to make it better. Not with money-wise, there is nothing wrong with that, but more importantly, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How we can improve our ibadah, how we can do more, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is the ultimate success. And this is, as I started my khutbah by saying, this is the purpose of our creation as a human being. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. When we talk about the concept of ibadah, that is why it does not mean that we should neglect our ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mandated for us. And this applies to our prayer. In particular, many of us, because of their work, because of their busy day, sometimes miss a prayer or two and pray it later. And Ramadan is the month of blessing where most of us would not miss any prayer by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remind my brothers and sisters to make this month the month of praying in full and maybe carry it insha'Allah for the rest of the year. So we would not miss any one prayer we will pay it on time and we will make it a part of enjoyment of the day to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Maybe you think you don't have the time or you are too busy, but you should not be busy from talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ramadan is the best day to build this as a habit for the rest of the year and for the rest of our life. I would like also to remind my brothers and sisters to remember the people of Gaza in their prayers. We have seen their plight that has continued for many years. And we have seen the recent events, the bloody events that the people most of the world ignore as if it is something for granted. We should remember them in our prayers. We should Try to donate 
as much as he can to support them and to, look, to tell them that their brothers and sisters share their plight, share their suffering, and we hope, inshallah, that their suffering will end soon, be I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the best way in our life. اللهم اجمعنا على ما يؤذيك وحل بيننا وبين معاصيك اللهم اجعلنا من المتحابين فيك اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه لكل خير ومن أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين شرا فخذه أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم لا تبع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا قبرته ولا عيبا إلا سترته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا غائبا إلا رددته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم عاف مبتلانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اجعل الجنة مثواهم ومثوانا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بحلالك عن حرام وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وبك عن من سواك عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإنتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة